and welcome back once again to Minecraft from the Fog. And things have gotten a little bit different between the last part and now. I had my court jester Herobrine bring me a message mysteriously delivered to the front door of the witch's house. It appeared to be a box containing yet another gift from Brett. As before, an early access update to the next version of the From the Fog mod. As before, it came with a list of caveats and warnings. However, some of these seemed a little bit different. I don't know, it seemed a little less technical and a little more... You're gone. Hmm. Yeah, well, I was unfortunately going to have to release you anyway. The magic I was using to bind you was eh, not the best. And as some of you said, and Brett confirmed, keeping Herobrine here was actually the reason why we weren't getting any other sightings. So, in, in the name of the series, that was going to have to be the case anyway. Now, I was told to try two things. And this is where it starts to feel more like... Well, more like a sinful gift, the kind the devil offers you that seems great at first, but actually proves to be your worst nightmare. So, ooh, so we got a couple of new settings. Name tag, on, dynamic, or obfuscated. Or sorry, off dynamic or obfuscated. And advancements. And he said, make sure you're recording when you turn on advancements. And we get challenge complete. Ooh, a light in the dark! That's me! That's my candle! And he's watching. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. I feel like I'm, like, actually a part of this mod in a way now. That's actually really nice. Now, here's the thing that I'm a little bit more concerned about. He added later, Take Liberty's lantern and give it back to her. Uh, she doesn't want that. She's trying to hide it from me. Well, don't worry, Liberty, because I am hyper aware of this developer potentially doing something to hurt you. And so I have backed up this series so much. I mean, it's literally, I have it like on two different drives and one in the cloud. I'm literally using like two local, one remote rules for this. But I will try it knowing that nothing can happen permanently. And we get the challenge! Hello, Liberty! Oh, that is so cool! The Shriekers are going wild! They love this, too! Okay, that was horrifying, but cool. Aw, oh, thank you so much, Brett. Uh, unless it's gonna, like, poison her over time or something, but, uh... Seriously, you guys have no idea. I, I, I will roll back this series, like, five parts to save Liberty if anything happens. Uh, but let's check our enhancements, advancements, sorry, to see what these things actually... Oh, that is so cool. You've added your own line of From the Fog-based achievements. Okay, let's see. Uh, I, you can't see him, but I promise he can see you. A light in the dark. Be the librarian! Ah, oh, uh, that one's exclusive. I'm sure there's a way to hack it. And Hello Liberty, give a lantern to an LA. Oh, that is so cool! Oh, I am honestly honored. This is awesome. All right, uh, and let's see what other kinds of things we can get. Is someone following me? Survive three days? Okay, a lot of these are going to be things we've already gotten, uh, but of course these didn't exist before. Uh, someone's following me. Survive ten days. Discover a tree that you didn't chop down. I don't remember doing this. Discover any structure placed by Herobrine. I'm on single player, right? Discover a leafless grove. Lava couldn't cause this. I, I don't know if we've discovered some of those. I've discovered things that I suspected of being that. Who put this here? Find a dreadful donation from Herobrine. I don't know if I've gotten these. Uh, I'll have to pay attention when I get, um, when I get the achievement, but, well, to be honest, I just leave rotten meat every which way. You don't know what you did. Build a Herobrine shrine. I don't know if we have to enable OG Shrine Mechanic to get that, but we will be doing that for the achievement. Ooh, we have new goals! Have a nightmare for the first time. 
oh, it's only happened once in this entire series. You okay, boy? Witness a tamed wolf growl at Herobrine. Maybe we should get a dog. I should call Kevin, spot Herobrine for the first time. Imagine getting that achievement. Imagine getting that achievement when you didn't see him. Go into your achievements to see what that unlock was and find out this way. And finally, this other one. He's watching. Gets stalked by Herobrine without noticing. Oh. Hi! <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, what a way to say hi! Ooh. There's two of you stacked inside each other. One of you actually almost looks like a skeletal face, like glitching through from under the hair of another, totally covered. And you're just kind of placing a sign back in... Wait, 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 that is so... This is so weird. I'm watching you... It's just cycling through them. This is probably a bubble... Oh my god! There's like a bunch of you stacked inside each other. It's creating like multiple heads on each side. This is probably a bug, but it's legitimately creepy. And the skulk spreader actually reacted to you. Finally settling on listen closely. Uh, this is far too much noise here for me to listen closely to much of anything. Well, I'll tell you what, we can actually use this opportunity now to definitively test whether these shrines are working. Let me just place you there. Ah, so this would work. I just didn't notice anything. Of course, we didn't build these shrines until after more than three days had already passed in-game, uh, which is when Herobrine will start spawning by default. Justice? Okay, there you are, Justice. I always get so worried when I can't find you. I know at this point that you're considered a pet and won't despawn, but I might just bite the bullet, use some levels, and get name tags for all of you. I'm just so paranoid. Uh, but we do have some work to do in this part, of course, as always. And I feel like this series has kind of slowed down a little too much. I mean, what do you think? I feel like I've spent a little too much time showing the busy work of building up New Dunwich, of building up Roya, and maybe I should do a little bit more of that off-screen, especially since I'm about to start the project of actually moving into Aurelia. Oh my god. And maybe you're not too happy about that. Hang on, let me uh, disable the sighting noise as well. Although, I have to say, originally we disabled the sighting noise because, well, you didn't want me to know when I had missed him. Remember, early on, he used to appear in the distance far more, and there was actually a lot of fun people were having spotting him when I didn't. These days, he seems to spawn a lot closer, and I don't know, maybe maybe it is better to be left with that sinking feeling that those noises tend to leave me with. Justice, I feel like I really don't spend nearly enough time with you. You are so adorable. I've, like, googled pictures of actual axolotls since this came out, and they are just, like, I can't believe they exist on Earth. Look at you, coming here for pets? Uh, you don't want me to pet you with a pickaxe, though. That would probably be kind of painful, and especially with how squishy you look. You are so cute, though. I love you. I love you. Aww. Kenny says hi. Oh, uh, my cousin Kenny just sent an excited reaction image at seeing me play Minecraft, so hi, Kenny. Shout out. <laughs> All right, uh, we need to... Actually, I need to lure some more mobs over here. I want to get this Skulk Coast really going. Skeleton... Oh, I, I thought there was a skeleton jockey up there because I saw a spider and a skeleton together. Oh, no, you know what we have to do? Uh, we never finished our quest from before. We have to... Oh, stop despawning, guys. Unless the skeletons have ghost technology too now. Uh, we need to capture a skeleton and a creeper so we can get them to kill each other for music. Okay, perfect. A whole bunch of them right here. Uh, of course, we'll want fairly level ground. We don't have a lot of that right now. Uh, but place that here. Get in. And now we need a one of you guys. 
And I think there's like a couple of you up here. One of them might have been a chicken. Mistaking skeletons for chickens is actually a common mistake, so you don't really get to criticize me for that. Uh, a boat does not preclude the use of a shield. Good to know. Good to know. Now the question is, if they're too close together, will the creeper try to blow up the skeleton? Oh, and also some of you inform me that smite actually only works on undead enemies. And is also, in fact, not applied to the shovel. Come on, this way, this way. Ah, oh, it happened again. Okay, well, that's all right, actually, because we can go get this other creeper. Ah, oh, great. Just all, the whole gang's here tonight. Dodge, epic dodge. Uh, maybe you'll fight each other a little bit? No? Oh, come on, creeper. Nope. All right. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. I wonder if you guys count as undead. You actually, it does seem to be doing extra damage to you guys. Oh. You're actually, uh, you're actually spirits. Well, we can get those sweet, sweet membranes and make some potions out of them. One more. Okay. Not die. Now, how are we going to work out this arrangement? Oh, this is difficult. I don't want to get too close. Do I have dirt? I do. Ah. There we go. Okay, this is going to work. Come on. There we go. We need to pop out, be visible for a moment, or it won't take the shot. Come on, this is working! It's really not working. Why, why are you doing so little damage all of a sudden? That one went around. Come on. There we go, and we get... Wait, did we get... Oh my jeez! Oh, I haven't seen that one before! You are glowing with a big bright smile! You're back and... You... You... Are you... This game is just screwing with me at this point. Uh, after all that... After all that, we get the music disc that we've literally encountered every single time we've gotten one, just about. Uh, taking you guys out with melee is actually a lot easier than you'd think. Yeah, sadly, it doesn't seem that transporting you via boat is going to help much, so maybe we can kill two birds with one stone. Boom. Wow, you really are a trooper. That boat survived a creeper explosion. Uh, this is the fate of all my enemies, standing here watching them helplessly burn alive. With the timing of that, it almost looked like I deflected the bullet, didn't it? I mean, bullet, arrow. Oh, whoa, 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 hang on, that's not fair! That's not fair! I wonder if you count as undead. Doesn't seem so. Ow. You're actually hitting me quite hard. Oh, what? Did I see Herobrine for just a second there? I don't know if that was just, like, blue wib bulliness or what, but I could have sworn as I was whipping around it was there for just a moment, right where the Enderman was. Oh, I'm actually getting my butt kicked right around home right now. But we are also going to have to start collecting these Ender Pearls because, from what I remember, these actually show us the way to an Ender Dungeon or Fortress or whatever. Uh, the sign farm is just growing and growing. Uh, but also, some of you said that uh, silverfish don't often spawn unless it's near such a fortress, right? Now, you said that it could happen, but that they could indicate a presence like that. So I'm thinking, with Dunwich being kind of right in the middle of everything, I might gather up a bunch of these. I could buy them from the Dunwich Cleric and start using them, start throwing them to guide me in the right direction from there. Now, my first set of diamond armor is actually dangerously close to breaking, and I'm not sure if I can actually... Well, I guess I'll keep the swift sneak for now. I'm not actually sure if they can be recycled for diamonds in the same way that other ores can. Now, if we're going to be moving into Rolia, I think a good idea as far as construction goes is going to be to do things that both contrast with and complement the existing architecture. Now what that means is, while we'll be bringing down a lot of wood, a lot of nether stuff, 
I also want to use just a lot of plain old deep slate bricks. I think that'll be a good way to go about certain things. Unfortunately, what that means is I am going to have to be cutting out the metric ton of mining I'm going to have to do. Because I'm going to be needing a whole lot of this stuff. I saw you there. There was just like a moving shadow, and with all the mobs about, I didn't think anything of it. Oh, so many horrors seem to take place while I'm farming at night. Yeah, I guess that's the reason for daylight savings time. Oh, oh, the way you just slowly rose up from beneath. Your image resolving as you approached. Uh, yeah, I'm just doing a whole bunch of farming right now because I really, really need to get my emeralds back up. Uh, it never ends! Oh my god, it just keeps happening! And you... Wait, I'm not sure I'd seen you before. See, the thing is, in the dark, in the shadows, you just... You just look like everybody else. It's only... When I see that you're not moving like everybody else. Uh, that's, that's the thing, you just, you move so much like a player. Hang on, wait, I made you sound way cooler than I wanted you to. Wait, no, before you die. Before you die, I need you over this way. Come, come to the Skulk Coast. Come become one. Uh, howdy there. Uh, can we use you to build our Skulk Coast? There we go. Ah, uh, seeing this stuff grow on glass. And maybe that could add that level of separation between spaces. We can see through, but just not quite. Uh, the sealed off containment unit has actually sort of become the deep dark of my own. That was the worst. Hearing that running behind me sound was the worst entering a space, even in broad daylight surrounded by basement chickens. Just because it's like... It's like going up the stairs after getting a snack at night. Those last seconds you always feel like there's something right on your heels, so for that to be confirmed by a sound, no bueno. Alright, but as of right now, we are currently embarking on a trade mission. I'm going to go around to all these different cities and villages and try to trade some of our wares. Because I need emeralds for diamond stuff. Yeah, we got through there pretty easily given all the things that are around us. So it seems like the various protection charms that we've left all over the place are doing their job. Can we jump through from here? We can. I should probably make a note of that. But our little community is growing and thriving. Hey there, Cleric. Uh, will you actually buy some of our... Ooh, there we go. Our very first commerce with the people of New Dunwich. They also don't seem to be spawning in here. Now, some of you said in the comments that they do indeed spawn at low light levels. You don't really get the impression from the nether because you can see everything, but it is actually quite dark in here. And so placing these things all about, uh, we'll prettify that later, does actually make a difference. Junior's been actually running around carrying those seeds this whole time. And that's actually kind of sad, isn't it? Ah, uh, after his mischievous youth running around and not paying any mind to me, stealing my minecart and getting into all kinds of trouble... Eh, kind of decided to find a home for himself. I'm going to come back with a name tag and actually try and make Junior a permanent resident. Maybe even give him his own little space where he won't have to worry about all these soul torches. You guys, however, don't seem to have any such issues, do you? Yeah, you'll keep away from me so long as I stay near the mushrooms, which they exist on either side of the place now. But it's still quite dangerous in here. Maybe the shade from the tree helps. <laughs> uh, 
It's always when I'm focused on something else. When I can't pay attention until, like, immediately after I've taken care of something, that's when it hits me the hardest. Now, one of you actually emailed me at my business email to say that in From the Fog, episode 14, at 811, a kitty was left outside Dunwich Village. Please return him to the village so he can be safe. I will try. <laughs> I will try because I found that really, really cute. Oh, come on. How do I get a kitty to like me? I, I think I need fish, right? Uh, I feel bad cornering you like this and chasing you, but I think I need fish. Is that correct? Uh, I'll have to go fishing. Maybe down in the cave. All right, kitty, just wait for me. I'll be back tomorrow. You've waited all this time. Ooh. <laughs> ah, those pillagers actually left behind some of their souls. I'll have to come back for that and use it to build my skulk coast. Oh my god! I didn't even notice you in amongst the glass until you started turning ever so slightly. Oh, you'll run a long distance, but it wasn't long enough. Oh, there's another kitty, but that one seems content to wander the landscape. Ugh. Falling like that was risky, but so, so cool. Oh, look at this fog, the way it adjusts as we get down here. Some of you have asked me to use uh, insanity shaders, which uh, maybe, maybe in the next part, or maybe even in this part, I'll give them a try. That's right. I've not killed a single one of you. I've just been harvesting all your glowing ink sacs from you drowning yourselves. You guys are actually a one-hit kill with Smite. If I decide to go for the crit bonus as well. There we go. That should do. There you are. Come here. Got some fish for you. Come here. Look. Look. No, don't run. Don't run. You looked. You looked, but you're moving away. Ah, oh, you are just... You are such a cat. You are such a cat. No, don't go near the skulk. It'll steal your soul. I guess this doesn't work anymore? It says this should work. Please don't go down in the cave. What? Look, right here, right here. Don't run. All right, we'll pick this up in the morning because I really do not want to be dealing with this when there are mobs about. I don't understand you guys. Like, at all. How do you keep doing this to yourselves? I mean, just sleep so no mobs show up. Hmm. Get out of my way. We can actually see another village from back here. That might actually be... I think that might actually be Arkham. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, there's the stairs we created for, uh, for patients. Had no idea they were actually this close together. Are you a survivor from the village? What are you doing all the way down here? Ah, it's, so, it's almost starting to seem like basically nobody died. Yeah, you're leveled up. Okay, well, give me all those. All right, well, anyway, you are coming back with me. Come on. Don't ever run off again. Well, I can't seem to find that kitty. I'm starting to think it actually doesn't want to go back. Oh, maybe it got used to life out here, living outside the walls for so long. And enjoyed that taste of freedom and not constantly being annihilated by hostile mobs. The ones that came to attack the villagers, I mean. It's definitely more competent than the villagers. Well... The village has returned its idiot, and I've done my good deed for the day. Yeah, I think you are the guard who deserted his post, aren't you? I actually don't remember if 
This place has always had an iron golem, but you might be the one who crept away from the nether. In which case, we will be bringing you back. Uh, we're just going on all kinds of recovery missions today, aren't we? What are you doing up there? Oh, uh, how did you manage to wedge yourself in there in the time I've been gone? Are you just, like, randomized when I come through a portal? Okay, well, I guess that does make it a little bit easier to dig you out, but this time, no more procrastinating. I have to build the fence. Come on, right this way. Uh. It's weird how I believed at first that practically all of them died, and now I'm learning all this time later that Practically none of them did. We actually did fairly well. But what does that advancement actually get us? Uh, I don't remember seeing it before. Oh, was it a secret? Get jump scared by Herobrine for the first time. Yeah, I just cannot find that cat who, even with the correct fish, just did not want to be brought back but who ultimately did lead me to the librarian. Oh, you know what? I'm starting to think that maybe the cat never really particularly cared to live in the village, bunch of idiots, but maybe they did take a liking to the librarian, the one educated one, the only one who thought to leave when it came under attack, and thought that in leaving might do him one last solid. And so, in the process of running away from me, also led me back to the one guy in the village that it actually sort of liked. You know, it's been a while since I've really hung out here, but I have come to really enjoy these rainy, overcast days in Dunwich. Well, I suppose it's now becoming a rainy, overcast night, but the reason I feel that way so much is because... You know, it's like how I always talk about creepy and comfy being a sense of danger, yet an insulation from that danger. I really feel that because this one is fenced off, it has the feeling of being the safest. And so, come on, we need spruce. Um, and so just taking a walk, even though it has that mood, is just really nice. All right, let's begin the process of finally baby-proofing this place, since this is apparently what these people need. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more fencing. I fear we have not addressed the root of the issue here. Nobody else is going to be falling off of this bridge. These have been extended a little bit, so you can't jump over this. But I think a lot of our problems are coming from here. Now, I did remove a couple of things that'll hopefully make them less inclined to jump down... Uh, but I do wonder if I'm not maybe just making them tank more damage when they do so. Yeah, this'll just have to do for now. And I'll just have to assume they're not stupid enough to plummet to their death. Oh my god, they're doomed. That's enough dunnage for now. I kind of feel like heading out and going to see what's going on with Innsmouth. Yep. Hey, guys. Hey, any second now. Any second now. What is it, like 15 seconds or something like that? Come on, I want to see it happen. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've likened myself to the devil. Appearing out of the mist and the fog. Or in one case, emerging from beneath a frozen lake with proposals and new technology and myths and legends all brought real before their eyes. However, a couple parts ago, I came to the observation that I'm not the devil. I'm Rick Sanchez. I am basically these people's entire lives, forcing them to revolve around me, bringing my portals with untold horrors pouring out of them. Every once in a while, I come back with what seems like probably the most significant events of their lives. When really, I'm just kind of bleeding their resources for all kinds of petty reasons. They wonder what kinds of powerful magic I must be using, arriving every so often to trade untold wealth with them, and occasionally bringing monstrosities unimagined. 
although apparently not unmatched. When in reality, I'm just using them for discounts and using that portal as a replacement for a boat. And there we go. This has actually been an extremely fruitful trade day. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the Arkham Farmer. Uh, these guys have a habit of disappearing on me. Hmm. I just realized when you're when you're flickering in and out of the portal like that, it kind of looks like it's going back and forth between day and night, doesn't it? Oh, you will all make a fine addition to my Skulk Coast. Oh, so much! So much! Look at all this! Uh, you guys actually fight each other all you want, because I got tons and tons of guys for this. One crit, one kill. Boom. Let's just spread all this out. Oh, I couldn't ask for a better outcome. Looks like the spider might have actually won against the skeleton. Don't want to forget anyone. Come on, right this way, guys. Whoops. Yep, could use just a little more over here. <laughs> we'll use some of the stuff that comes a little bit far inland to uh, supplement the rest. Bloop, and bloop, and right here, and bloop. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. Well, a couple of playful lays take a bath with their little brother right there. Ah, oh, this is just so beautiful. I I've always really loved the idea of taking trophies in games and knowing that the souls of my slain enemies are contained within this. Actually replacing the night sky when visitors approach, that's just... That feeds my ego in a way nothing else ever has. Yeah, a little skulk right here. Never heard anybody get some below the waterline. Ooh. I really like the way it reflects in here. Oh, and, uh, well, it's a full moon right now, but, uh, some of you guys actually pointed out something that's a little bit unnerving in the last part. See, Patience and I were riding along the surface of a frozen lake, and I was commenting on how beautiful everything looked with BSL shaders, but... As some of you pointed out, the reflection in the ground, in the ice, did not actually match the phase of the moon. <gasps> Look at that! Look at that! There's our thumbnail! A face in the sky, uh, parting now, but with the moon as its one glowing eye. That was so creepy and such good timing. You can just die right about there, please. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, Justice has a little bit more to peek through. Oh, look at that. In the darkness, the Skulk Coast actually has, like, a very noticeable gap in the bottom. Almost like a hole in the stars themselves, welcoming you in. Of course, all that's down there is one angry pillager. Uh, actually, which some of you guys said... Uh, you had some suggestions for names for. I actually read one uh, that was pretty compelling. How are you doing, bud? Uh, hang on, let me alt-tab out and read what that was. Oh, I found it! Okay, I found the comment. I've been searching for it for like 10 minutes now. Oh, and it's by, uh, it's by Trey Wilder, too. Or Trey Wilder, sorry if I'm getting that wrong. But uh, you actually suggested that we name the illager uh, Hamlet. And that goes way back uh, after a character that got onto the elevator on the elevator source video. So that is a very old reference uh, from somebody who's been in the comments for quite a while now. I always love seeing people who have been here for a while. Yeah, you say he was the he was the guy who got on with the flaming hair. Yes, I remember him, uh, who I actively distrusted and spoke of restraining. All right, you'll be getting a name for yourself pretty soon, Hamlet. Uh, but first, I want to make another name tag for Junior. I feel like this is quite a power move, isn't it, at this point? All this time, and I don't even need the extra levels. All I'm doing is using it so I can name my various prisoners and characters who I name like dogs, despite having agency of their own. Huh. 
Still, though, it's weird how I have come to see so much personality in these Minecraft NPCs, but I've already talked a lot about that. Now, some of you said that I could just let him break his bow, stand here, hold the shield up, let him kind of fire at me aimlessly. Uh, however, that's not really going to work out because, um... Ooh, <laughs> does that actually deflect and hurt you? I'm not sure. But you said it could take, like, 20 minutes. So instead, we're just going to go like that. Hamlet is your new name. Uh, all right, Junior, you still there? There you are. I really don't want you going away. I kind of don't think you will. Ah, before you, I had never noticed that the pigmen are actually persistent. So there you go. And Junior is official, the town child. Getting into all kinds of mischief. Carrying around his little, ooh, actually a tree. A tree sapling, that is actually so cute. A sign of life from another world. You must actually, you must actually have some level of appreciation for what's going on here. You were so fascinated by this different culture that you had to come see it for yourself. And now you're horrified by all the things we put up to keep your kind away. I actually feel really bad now. Maybe you can ride this baby Pumbaa? I mean, it doesn't bother the villagers. They hate me, but I mean, I'm safe as long as I stay near these mushrooms. But yeah, we are now entering the city of Rulia because I want to address some of the things you guys have said about it in between episodes. Now I apologize, it's probably going to be a little bit longer between parts. I've been extremely busy this week, it's unreal. But look, I haven't forgotten about the sound of pistons when we first arrived here. And we haven't heard it in a while because we've removed a lot of these skulk sensors that were presumably activating them. However, perhaps it's time, before we start building, for us to do some archaeology. But you said that finding the other archway, the other... You said it is indeed a portal, simply one that we can't light over there, means that we, we aren't sitting not on one ancient city, but two. Two rare spawns which appeared right beside each other. Which apparently is like nuts! So here's the deal. It might be a little too challenging, at least for now, to wait until we've reclaimed all that to start building. So I'm going to build in this episode, and it'll kind of be a Manhattan-Newark situation, or a Manhattan-Jersey City situation, where you have one over here, grand and ancient, and with so much history and beauty, and then you have the other one over there that the rest of us just mostly forget about. If we do some excavating here, you said we may find a secret room beneath this. So let's equip this in our offhand, forgo the shield for now, and start tunneling into here. Uh, first, let's take the advantage we can and see down here. Uh, this looks to truly be beneath the earth. So maybe, yeah. Yeah, these are the pistons. And here's the contraption that powers it. I'm going to leave this because uh, maybe I can learn a little bit about how redstone works. Look! More rooms beyond the glass. A full block of redstone. This is what they were messing with, although I'm not sure what this does beyond light these. Maybe they were discovering redstone, and this is where they experimented with it. They were only beginning to put it to use as this place fell. If it did fall, actually. If this wasn't what they intended all along. Oh, I don't like the look of that. This looks like some kind of, like, weapons test chamber. Like, I'm gonna mess with this thing and then the BFG-9000 is gonna fire and blow me through the wall. Now, perhaps we should do further excavation, or perhaps this is all there is, or... Perhaps we could also try it the other one? I was actually thinking that in a pinch it may be fun to use the skulk over there in Jersey City as a means of constructing something you guys have suggested for New Dunwich. However, I think I'm going to leave this as intact as I can, and perhaps use the tunnels below Arkham. I am going to need a lot of skulk. Killing mobs isn't going to be enough. 
Uh, and I'm not sure if I've actually talked about that yet. That project. See, I'm intending on actually creating a night sky above New Dunwich. I was thinking it, a lot of you suggested it, and I am absolutely down to try it. Okay, here we are at the second portal. Now let's see if, yep, there is something beneath it. Maybe it'll be the same, maybe it'll be something different. Oh, wow, no. Huh, it's actually not even all that secret. But it does have redstone complexities, same as before. Like I said, I'm gonna wait for your guys' advice before I start messing with any of this. Now, for all I know, this is connected to some TNT beneath the carpet. It is cool, though, getting to come down here and do <laughs> what is essentially archaeology. Get glimpses into, not words, but images, which sort of give us an idea of who these people were and how they lived. So much remaining mysterious, though. Uh, coming down here always feels like I'm recording an episode of Outer Wilds or something. Uh, we can get you while we're at it. We can deal with a scream. Yep. Huh. Could have sworn I saw something in the shadows there for just a moment. Huh, the skulk bears rewards. Oh, but if I break this, I won't get diamonds. Because this pick has silk touch. Oh, but I do gain new recipes. We can't remove it from here. Ooh. Look at those light shafts moving through the tunnel. I think that was moonlight. Ah, but the way those soul torches were framed, it was almost like they were cutting through the fog. And you know what? We're down here. It's atmospheric. I'm going to start spending a lot more time down here. Because I'm going to be building. Might as well check out those insanity shaders, huh? Let's see how it looks. Ooh. Ooh, this certainly is a darker, more intense fog. Huh. Look, and that moonlight from the unrendered ends of the cavern is certainly doing work here. I can see, but it's definitely more oppressive. It's actually so thick, it actually reminds me of uh, a couple days ago, exploring and being down in the tunnels, all the dust suspended in my flashlight beam. Hopefully you'll see that soon as, uh, as a 360 video. Ooh, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Whole new layer to this. There are caves perched above this one. And mobs do spawn in them. Alright, this got a little bit more complicated. This is too close for comfort in my opinion. No! Ow. Wow, look at all this. Uh, I think we are going to be playing with this for the foreseeable future. Man, I always forget to sleep in that one bed that I have upstairs. I need to move it down. This is why we need to build a house here to begin with. Now, where was it? It was at the base of that pillar of water. Trying to get that little guy right there. How much XP can we get back? Only seven levels? Really? That's all you keep? All right, well, we got all our stuff back with the exception of the diamond hoe, which I imagine probably had vanishing. Oh man, I hate heights in this game so much. Unfortunately, the biggest loss here is the XP. Honestly, like, it's probably my most disliked part of the game at this point is the XP and enchanting system, because it's something that you need so often, but it's something that just takes forever to be able to use. Which is why we need to build the mob spawner in this part, which I do need to look up even how to do that. I've never built one before because, well, I've never been this invested in a save before. Goodbye. Now this is the diamond uh, hoe that is enchanted with Fortune 3. So we definitely do not want to lose this one. Luckily it does not have Curse of Vanishing. 
Now what do we see up here? Ooh, more diamonds. And another dripstone cave. And another of Herobrine's structures. Yeah, I walked over here because I knew I'd get that achievement. Another merit badge for our ghostly scouting book. We should probably build another stone cutter down here. Actually, a lot of our materials can be sourced from here since, you know, it is underground. Oh my god. I have to say, buggy or not, I really do... It stops me in my tracks for a second when you do these impossible escapes. I turned around, hearing those sounds, I thought you were a zombie! You looked just like a zombie, and, uh, the fog... The fog made it so much more obscure. Alright, enough horsing around, though. We have got a home to build. And I think the best place to start this off without destroying the natural beauty of this place any more than we already have, is to build right into this. Build ourselves below the portal without obstructing it, which means that this ladder is going to be gone at some stage. And this right here, this will be our home. Unfortunately, what complicates this is the fact that these are all slabs, so I think this is going to have to get torn up. Yeah, we open this up and reveal the redstone below, actually straight into the secret room. This might be more destructive than I thought, but it's gonna have to be okay. We'll also replace some of these cracked stones where they're exposed with regular unbroken stones. I think that'll be a good way to show reverence. Of all things, the smoldering embers of the nether Seems so much thicker, and yet the colors so much duller. Certainly a new way to perceive things, and if we're to attribute an in-universe explanation for why things are suddenly so different, I'm starting to think that perhaps Herobrine does not take kindly to being made a fool of. Oh my, what is that sky? Ah, oh, it was almost an orange haze at first, but... Ooh. Look, our lighthouse is hardly lighting anything against that. Oh! That is so creepy. I am gonna have such a hard time choosing a thumbnail for this one. Now is not the time! To hear something rush up behind me. I'll look at that overcast sky. Our lighthouse now being lit not by its own power, but by an external power entirely, that of nature itself. And I'm a little disconcerted by how that Enderman's existence seemed to be tied to my menu and HUD being there. But it seems we've arrived, as unnerving as that was, during the transition to daylight, uh, which is the better of the two options. I'm just making a piggy bank run because I need to head over to, uh, what was it, Arkham I think has the toolsmith, and grab ourselves some diamond picks. Uh, some of you actually suggested, or at least one of you, suggested that if we're to name our territory, the place where no villager has yet set foot, except for a few zombies, and one pillager, we should actually call this place Miskatonic. Which I couldn't really find any sources on pronunciation, but it seems pretty straightforward. If we call ourselves Miskatonic, named after the Lovecraftian University studying the occult, well, that actually makes quite a bit of sense, doesn't it? A lone loon living here with his pets? All kinds of things dedicated to studying and understanding the paranormal. All kinds of architecture and rituals meant to actually invoke those evil spirits. Put it that way, and it actually starts to make a tremendous amount of sense. Also, we doing soul torches here now. Ah, uh, you don't sound happy, Hamlet. Well, don't worry, you're not supposed to. Even though we've made things a little bit more personal by giving you a name, 
Don't forget, you're still there to be laughed at by Percy. Aw, look at you. Look at you. I love it when they come close and let me boop their head like this. Yeah, looking at this in the daylight, this actually is pretty much precisely the effect I was looking to get all along. Absolutely beautiful. And really eliminating those harsh edges that a uh, voxel-based world generation tends to create at the edge of your draw distance. I think it may have actually been Innsmouth and not Arkham that had the toolsmith. This is the guy we spent so much time trying to level up after all, so much time down in those caves. Which, by the way, once we get this pick, I think we're going to go down into the Dunwich system, since it is so easily accessible, and use that to get ourselves a whole bunch of Deep Slate for this project. Scary to do after previous events, but saves a lot of time, and wow. As long as the other ends of the cavern are open during the day and not loading in, light floods in. Uh, but the fog that hangs low over everything reduces everything to silhouettes. Great for landscapes, not the best for caves. Hang on. Okay, according to OBS, it doesn't look like that's the case for you. But all sound has actually cut out for me. Very eerie seeing these silhouetted figures wandering around in the darkness. I can't hear a thing. You know what? I'll actually mute it for you too, since... I think this might have happened once or twice before while I wasn't recording. I think that if I pause... And return. Yeah, there we are. We're back. That was extremely eerie. Oh, this whole thing is so unnatural. A truly ghostly image, almost like something of the afterlife. Like a Renaissance depiction of heaven. Or of purgatory, as the case may be, considering these guys are here. No! Oh, that, uh... Yeah, I feel like that really feeds into the idea that the mobs aren't actually evil, but just sort of defending nature. I mean, that bat... <laughs> that bat Mr. President did the creeper, which then just detonated itself out of rage. Ooh, diamonds. Grab some of those. And you know what? I am getting a little bit bored just kind of like, you know, doing all this mining by myself. It's going to take quite a long time to get as much as I need. I can probably move a lot of this to the Rolia system itself. However, uh, I think now might be a good time, since I am talking, uh, to check out some stats because we haven't done that in a while. All right, let's uh, go into here, statistics. And let's start with mobs immediately presents me with the one bat I just killed uh, 61 blazes 11 cave spiders 396 chickens seems low only 165 creepers 11 endermen we need to pump up those numbers 175 hoglins again seems very very low and despite all this I've actually never been killed by one. I've eliminated 77 pillagers. I think the piglins might actually have the record for the most times killing me at three. Uh, but then again, maybe the warden has more? The warden is at two. What an absolutely horrifying sound in a place that's been made all the more horrifying just recently. Oh, this place has been so many things. I can't wait to try what night vision looks like down here with this pack installed. Uh, but we are certainly not done with uh, stats yet. Uh, because I want to see how long I've been playing for. Oh, uh, look at this. We have crouched 15 kilometers. Fl flown 28 kilometers. What do you mean, flown? Fallen, almost 7. 
sprinted 120 and walked 333 kilometers. That's crazy. Wow, I, I have jumped 44,132 times and killed just shy of 2,000 mobs. Thank you, Deep Dark, for making my total sneak time four and a half hours. Wow. Okay, right here. Time played 3.35 days. And time with World Open 3.59 days. So I guess that accounts for pauses and such. But still, it goes to show just how long it actually takes to make an episode of this, and it's getting longer as it goes on. These days, an episode usually takes like four to six hours of record time, usually split over multiple sessions. Do not talk to strangers, please. Oh, that was weird. I didn't even... I haven't changed the config, but it didn't even play the scare noise that time. Oh, almost like that wasn't meant for me. Ah, uh, there we are. Nope, nope, nope. Take those back. Take those back. One of you said that uh, they will actually continually rotate their trades until such a time when they uh, are traded with. So maybe what we need to do is just build up a decent stock of these raw pork shops. Maybe kill some more hoglins, some more Pumbas for the stuff, and then we can lock you in by trading. Alright, are you still down to trade? You are excellent. And we are good. You should now be locked in. This haze that hangs in the air in the morning in caves is so strange. It's like being woken up for breakfast before school, but you're way down here. <laughs> and it really accentuates the way up. Uh, I just need a handful of you. Now would have actually been a really good time for the Silk Touch pick. But I have gone and built myself a furnace down there so that we can get ourselves a stone cutter and start sourcing all of our masonry locally. Oh, we can get terracotta by trying to smelt clay blocks entirely. Wow, look at this. Uh, I, I love as the sun is setting, that sort of brownish overcast haze that goes over the sky. Huh. This might be the darkest we've seen this throne room yet. Only lit by the presence of my family. Although that light is certainly more than enough. And don't think I forgot about you, Patience. One of these days, we're gonna have to head this way again. Something I'd really like to do is look for more of those igloos. Maybe we'll find another one of those mysterious basements and whatever we were meant to find within. It seems like the bottom was long ago blown out of the other one. Whether there's Herobrine or not, it may very well have been haunted. Oh, this is just providing us with so many potential thumbnails tonight, huh? <laughs> it was the way I started to walk past you. And how <laughs> advanced dark it is outside. Being in here is actually a lot more nerve-wracking now. In fact, I think what I might start doing is swapping out shaders depending on the mood. Were it not for the presence of these fine folks, uh, being here would start to feel a lot less comfy and more like another night in... Darkwood. Huh. Patience slowly creeping in actually gave me a little miniature palpitation as well, but uh, we're not going to worry about that. The fact that I saw it happen this time. Oh my god! This is ridiculous. I, I had really gotten used to these sightings, and now... I don't know if it's a combination of the time away from them in the last part... 
or just how much more atmospheric this shader pack is. But either way, it's certainly scary. It's certainly given me a renewed sense of powerlessness, put it that way. See, in the beginning of this series, I mean, I was shipwrecked, stranded, not an iron bar to my name. I felt powerless because I was powerless. But as my power has grown, the fact that it doesn't overcome the ghosts, even for as much as it seems to at times, well, that's a different feeling altogether. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Hmm. I brought these glass panes for the other project, so I don't want to waste them just yet. But, I must say, you are looking like a very nice prisoner for a new Dunwich. Oh, and right behind the church as well. Get to hear your shrieks while Black Mass is on? Not the time or place for an unwelcome visitor. Imagine if there were something left on the doorstep when that happened. Brett, imagine if there was something left on the doorstair step when that happened. Um, paralyzed, or at least my vocal cords are paralyzed with fear. But, as you can see, the cosification of this place is well underway. Uh, we have currently our nice, comfy little uh, submerged area. Let's dipped. I'm not sure what the word for this would be, but anyway, uh, you can sit on this couch or lie here and look up at the false stars above. And as day breaks in the overworld, so too does it here. And I feel that it's at this point, it would not go amiss to switch back to BSL and see what this would normally look like as I had envisioned it. There's our regular brightness, and as you can see, this is actually quite a cozy little pad, if I do say so myself. On oh, this horrifying spot, this one oasis of dim light surrounded by the horrors of the past and the horrors of the very much present, this place where I died more than any other single spot in the series, well... Now it's a cozy little hidey hole. The kind of place you might think of as a secret clubhouse when you were a kid. And it seems that it's about as exclusive as those old secret clubs. Uh, what am I talking about? The more the merrier. I'm actually kind of glad you guys are here. After all, what's a mansion without a butler? Although I don't want you touching my food. Ah, and that about confirms the boats do prevent despawning forever. However, uh, it does not prevent creepers and the like from spawning all around here. Okay, now I watched a video tutorial. And what I learned is that I don't have enough for this. I have to go find some torches. Goodbye. Or wait, I could probably do it with redstone, right? Redstone torches would probably work. Let's do it this way, just for convenience. Only need a few. Can only make a few. Boop, boop, boop. And now that should prevent you from spawning at all. Now, what we need is to essentially rebuild this chamber so that it fits the dimensions needed to make this mob spawner work, or this mob farm. And the first thing we gotta do is clear out the space so that there's four blocks between the spawner and the wall in all directions. Now, of course, this is all fine by me, because I happen to find myself in the market for a whole lot of stone, especially deep slate. Now, as you can see, we have plenty of space, four blocks in each direction. And here is where it might start to get a little bit messy. I'm gonna put this, uh, I'm gonna put this crate down outside so that I can store some of our not-needables. And basically, we need to dig this whole floor three blocks down. So, if we run into anything, that might be a little bit of work to clear up. Uh, 
This is what I didn't want to see. Gravel. Because we actually need to dig down even farther than this to make this work. And, eh, it might not be too bad, but we do have to fill all this in and dig it out. Oh, look at how unnatural that is. Hovering in the center of the room like a boss fight in an 80s arcade game? This is an unnatural thing we're doing. Which is why I'm pretty into it. Hey, tough has a use after all. As landfill. Cool. All right, now we've got some water down here. Of course, the flow of this will act as a funnel, bringing them straight to this block. And this is where it's gonna get a little bit scary. We gotta tunnel straight down 10 blocks. <sighs> okay, luckily we seem to be fine. Only because I don't fully understand it, even though I do get the premise. Uh, so I want to make sure I follow everything to the letter, at least the first time around, so that I know how to do it. And place a hopper right here, which should mean that everything from here will get placed into there, right? Uh, maybe I have to actually, yeah, I have to do it like that. And you'll see there's actually a little connection that forms, right? Meaning that if we toss this this way, it will feed straight into there. Oh, I had no idea how these things work the longest time. I mean, I know they've been in the game forever. I just never had a use for them. Until now, that is. All right, so we need to seal this off so that mobs can't get out. And use some slabberinos to completely limit our exposure. If we were to remove these torches, mobs should now be able to spawn in the dark of this room, fall down there and eventually be filtered through. I actually don't even need it. Yep, there you go. You can be our first victim down the hatch. Doesn't even matter if I catch these because they'll fall right through. And let's go downstairs and observe. Yes, yes, I can already see this working. But now we have a whole bunch of them spawning in here. We grab our smite ax. And we start killing them very quickly. Unfortunately, we don't have room to jump. Yeah, you too, Junior. And we get the XP, and this gets the meat, which we can sell to clerics. And if I were to just pause and stay here for like five, ten minutes, we'd have quite a few of these guys. I imagine there's no limit to how many can spawn. Ah, all the free XP and none of the guilt of killing chickens. Well, I feel less guilty about that over time, but you know what I mean. And we'll just use those excess torches to light this room so that they know they came to the wrong neighborhood. Zombies thrive in darkness, along with all the other mobs. Oh, this is so cool. You know, I'm gonna take this moment to say, you remember in the beginning of this series when I would say, yeah, this isn't pretty, but it's functional. And over time, I've sort of prettied things up a little bit. But also remember what I said at the beginning of this episode. I'm taking a slightly different approach because I feel like we've been mired down in all the construction projects that have to happen. You guys are so loud. And it's kind of made the series lose a little bit of its spirit. It's become more technical than creative the last couple episodes. So I'll tie all that together by saying this. This series has done so much for me in terms of my knowledge of the game, in terms of my skill at the game, but also in terms of my appreciation for the game, and it's all because of you guys. A lot of it is because of you guys actually pushing me to learn to do things and be less complacent than I otherwise have been in the over a decade leading up to this point. And so in that way, I, I feel like you have, like, enriched my appreciation for this. Pushing me out of my comfort zone, I think, is the reason I've been able to get so far into the emergent storytelling. Seeing new things that I have to think about on the fly and interpret. But those are all some very nice words that they've all been forced to listen to uh, before some really not nice things are going to happen to them. Ah, uh, look at those levels. <laughs> uh, this is so broken. 
I do wonder how much overlap there must be between the Minecraft communities and Factorio communities. Uh, now here's a thought. Imagine if in the quiet moment after the cacophony of all this, if a Steve head with white eyes just slowly slid down to look at me like some kind of demented Santa Claus. Or I suppose right now I'm actually like some kind of demented reverse Santa Claus, but you know what I mean. And speaking of a Factorio mindset, you guys did say that uh, you can't actually remove spawners even with Silk Touch, right? <laughs> because I was just thinking, this is too slow. What if I go get some more and bring them back here? Uh, there really is something under the igloo after all. Uh, excuse me? How did you get in there? Did one of you spawn with one? <laughs> Uh, I guess there are some impurities in the process. Yeah, this, like I said, this is not just an XP farm, but an emerald farm. Since we can sell this rotten flesh, it's not going to be a lot, but it is a nice bonus. Alright, well... I could sit here all day until I'm level 30. I could do this literally any time I want to be level 30. Uh, but for now, I think we're just going to kind of leave this. The concept has been proven, the machine has been built, it is working. And so I think I'm going to go attend to other matters. Oh, so satisfying to watch them go down like that. But if we do this, they should not be able to hop up here themselves. And we can get going. Ah, oh, you've got yourself a boat made, eh? Well, I'll probably have to remove that company later on, but... And for now, I suppose I can allow you this. You know, technically that's three to a boat, which I'm not sure is allowed. As we return once more to the frosted peaks of, well, King's Peak, uh, the fog has once again returned. And we can take in the beauty and the isolation of this place. Oh, from up here, it's like we're floating on just a void. Floating in the abyss, a nothing that is this world. Look at that. The way the path just recedes off into the darkness. It's like a memory of a place we've never been to. Only a fragment. Ugh. You actually startled me, but you're definitely a friendly face, something I'm happy to see. Oh, you just don't see stuff like this in real life. I mean, I suppose you could, but... I mean, at least me personally, I'm used to existing amongst buildings and highways. It's weird, though. It's, it's unnerving, but it's like an unnerving serenity. I think it's leaning into that whole safety bubble idea. The idea that we're in this dark void, well, apparently with a kitty and an iron golem to protect us, basically the lanterns hanging from the poles act almost as a personal lantern we carry with us into the dark. Well, I suppose that's how settlements came to be in real life, isn't it? Need and comfort. Of course, sometimes there are intruders, and those intruders need to be dealt with. Thank you for the donation. Once again, a lot of contenders emerging for thumbnail. This is generating so many great screenshots, and I'm certainly going to be saving a lot of them regardless. But I don't really have much business here for the time being. I've just found myself so mesmerized by this image. But until we level up some villagers, this place is essentially an airport. And our flight is about to depart. Look at that. We can just barely, just barely make out the outline of the lighthouse over there. 
I kind of think this shader pack might go a little too far with dampening the lights because now, now we can't even see our own beacon, at least barely. Well, actually, it I can't tell if that's what it is, but it seems to reflect just a bit, but not enough. Or maybe those are the reflections of the jack-o'-lanterns or the glow mushroom whatever. Uh, but it is good to see some familiar faces. It's weird, I do feel like kind of a separation anxiety from being away from them for too long. Darwin, thanks for keeping things in order. Justice, oh, you actually leapt out of the water to greet me. These dark and stormy nights seem a whole lot darker and stormier with this installed. You like them too, don't you, Liberty? Given your taste in music, that's not all that surprising. But I'll tell you this, it's perfect weather and perfect conditions in this room for some scary stories, don't you think? All right, Liberty, Percy, Justice, gather around the throne. Huh? <laughs> well, wherever you go, you can hear me. One night, a bride go to visit her bubbind. Husband? Yes, my dear? Will we be married forever? Until death do us apart. The irony didn't catch the girl at the time, but soon it would. Very soon. That night they got married. The wedding had everyone in the town there, even the girl's parents and the husband parents. The party went on until the wee hours of the night, and everyone decided it was time to home. It was a good wedding say the husband parents. The bridge and husband go to their ceremony in Hawaii. But when they get there, the husband changed. He started getting violence. No, don't hit me, say the girl. So she pushed the husband out a window and he did. His hook hand that he got in the war fell off and stabbed him in the back. Later, the girl goes home after finishing enjoy her honeymoon. She goes to tell her husband parents the bad news. I'm afraid I killed your husband, says the bridge. The parents looked concerned for their husband's death. I hope you can forgive me, say the bridge. No, it's not that, my dear. And the parents hand a strange look in their eye. You see, Tim, the husband's name died when he was three. You were at the wedding all by yourself. The girl was so shocked she told the parents to pull car over, but then they heard a scratching sound. All the police found was a scratched car, a small stain of blood, and a hook hand car in the car door hook. <laughs> Yeah, I figured maybe this would be a little too scary for them, so maybe it would be good to tell something with a little bit of humor as well. I guess, in a way, that's a sort of allegory for the series as a whole, isn't it? But if you like this video and this series, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this mod out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to donate to my Patreon, that will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Let's enjoy the storm, shall we, as the sun rises?